Years and years and years ago, the uh, when Full Collapse was like first coming out, I, uh, I, a friend of mine had sent me like a demo song of theirs, mm -hmm. and uh, I was instantly super stoked on it. So they didn't have a website at the time, and all they had online was a contact of it was like ThursdayDove at AOL.com. So I put it on my buddy list as you know, like a teenager would do, and as soon as it came online one day I started IMing it and talking to him and it was uh, Steve their guitar player and I was like can I make a website for you guys kind of a thing and he was like uh, sure whatever so I made a, I made a website for them and uh, just kind of stayed friends over over time mm -hmm. and um, they, they came on their first tour on the west coast uh, with the Murder City Devils and um, went to the show and hung out with them and just from then on just always stayed really close friends with all those guys um, and then once this band started, I had sent Jeff our demo, and he was like, I want to work with you guys. So kind of from then on, just kind of continue to work together, whether it be through shows or whatever else. That's cool. I mean, you guys have only been a band for a few years, and you guys have done so much. Yeah, it's what, been overwhelming. What was your first tour like? First one was that West Coast tour that you did. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was, like, pretty short. It was, like, uh... Ten days. Mm-hmm. It was just up the West Coast. Just like a little DIY thing? Yeah. yeah. It was yeah, mostly yeah. like backyards, basements. Did we play any real venues except that bar in Boise? Yeah, it was pretty much I think it was, yeah, it was like all little small DIY spots on house shows, I remember. Um, and I mean, we still do that now, so it's pretty. It's the same as it's been, it's just for when we go on support tours. Well, on that first tour, is there a, is there a moment that sticks out the most? Like some crazy drunken moment, or <laughs> maybe one we're not gonna say. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean we're not the craziest band on tour. We're pretty, pretty mellow compared to a lot of people we meet. Mm -hmm. Just like to hang out. So, yeah. What about on your most recent tours? Are there are there moments that stand out that you guys are just you can't believe that happened? Yes. <laughs> I, think, I, think I think the shirtless in the van. Uh, <laughs> Experience. We don't have to go too far into detail. But that one was good. Yeah, yeah that, was good great, that was a great time. That's appropriate. To <laughs> we uh, we had just gotten done playing our first show on the Thursday tour, and we were all very excited, very rowdy. Elliot, in particular. I was feeling rowdy. particularly rowdy. <laughs> and you had was, only been with us for a couple days. Too. I barely knew these yeah, guys. Yeah, didn't at this really point. know him at this point. Okay. Uh, and I just declared shirtless in the van, and it just kind of caught on and. A whole, a whole uh, tale ensued from that that is pretty unbelievable that we don't have to go into detail about. But we don't want to mention how you got completely naked, and then when he and I smelled your asshole, we all. He, uh, <laughs> so, so you can't leave these details out. <laughs> okay, all right. You, you, so this is the van, the point the van was stopped, and Clayton ran out of the van to puke Bo in the middle of the story. I was, <laughs> I was driving. He and I were sitting shotgun. We were blasting meatloaf. Yeah. And uh, somehow I had staged up to the front of the van shirtless in just my boxers because things are just getting very rowdy at this point. Uh, and he decided to pull down my boxers and sing Meatloaf at my butt. Uh, to sing Meatloaf at your butt? Like, at what do you mean? Like, 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 at my butt. Using the oh. butt as a microphone. Using the <laughs> once, and then once the actual yeah. butt was scent open. came out, he uh, and I he just jumped just, shit. Just <laughs> were out. And he oh. actually threw up, and I gagged so hard. Oh, but uh, that was that was that's how I can't we, believe it. Had you showered happened. before we left for that I journey up to so. Seattle? I don't think so. I don't think yeah. so either. I don't think so. I think we're kind of yeah. delirious too, because we did a straight drive from LA uh, to, LA LA to Seattle, leaving at ten thirty on a Thursday night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah. So it seemed like a better idea. <laughs> so how many tours did you guys book yourselves before you started getting on like bigger tours? Um, I don't know. Three, three, I want to say. And then, I mean, even even so, like the the first tour we did that was not just you know completely DIY was was Thursday Fall of Troy Deer Hunter, mm -hmm. and that we were only on that for about two a weeks. week and a half, two weeks, and that when it ended in Texas, then I had booked everything since from there, so. That ended up becoming like a seventy-day tour, but it was only you know like the first two weeks were were like a booking agent situation. Living in LA, there's so many bands, and there's like almost nowhere to play anymore. The knitting factory closed and stuff. Mm -hmm. Was it difficult getting off the ground? I feel like we started 
I mean, just from my own observation, I feel like the whole house show thing started catching on a lot more here. Whereas, like, mm-hmm. I've never really gone to that many of them. And it's, like, I feel like it was sort of, like, a, like you said, it's, like, a retaliation against venues, necessarily, like, pay-to-play systems and nowhere to play. And it's, like, all right, well, why don't we just have a donation show in a backyard and it'll be more fun for everyone. So we ended up getting a lot of opportunities like that. How does that differ from, um, from like, if you guys were going to play the whiskey at the backyard show? Uh, we don't have to sell 80 tickets at $22. <laughs> <for our show. laughs> Did you ever have to sell tickets, though, to play? Not even. We've, we've never done, we've never done it this band. No, that's, that's a, that was one of, like, the ground rules was, like, we're never, ever going to do anything like that. Kind of like, degrading. It's very degrading. Yeah, it's so degrading. It's, 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 to be honest, it's, it's the funny like, thing is when you turn down those shows, they ask you later, like, "Oh, you can still play. You just don't have to sell tickets." Uh huh. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like our first show was at a house in Pasadena, which is no longer doing shows, but um, played there a few times. Yeah, we. Yeah, I mean, there. It seems as though, as lucky enough as it is, that like as soon as like a DIY venue in LA closes, another one just sort of appears right away Mm -hmm. and everyone usually gets a three to five month lifespan before it's shut down and then someone else will sprout one up and I mean just the neighborhoods kind of keep getting sketchier and sketchier (laughs) but but yeah it's you know started like Pasadena and now I think we're in Inglewood so oh so you and La Brea but that's gone now yeah yeah yeah. wait what's what's on La Brea uh, it, uh, McWorld. McWorld. There's a place oh, yeah. called McWorld. McWorld. It's just sort of like warehousey kind of room off like the tent at La Brea. It's pretty sketchy. But, yeah, it's gone now. It was a cool place, but it was like I don't understand how it was ever found because it was like run by like a couple of raver dudes yeah. who were like, oh, yeah, God. dude, you can totally like do shows here. It's fine. <laughs> it's I feel like that's how a lot of those places are. Raver Motion LA. Raver yeah. Motion. Raver yeah. pa- paving the way for hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> As far as ground rules, you were talking about how paying to play is, is one of the rules. What are other ground rules that you guys laid down? Um, but, uh, <laughs> I remember one time just saying, like, just want to put out a lot of records and play on good shows. I yeah, think that's, like, the general ground rules, like, like, well, I mean, you know, we've played, like, funny shows, like, you know, stuff that maybe wasn't our thing, but, like... We generally try and play with bands we like or, you know, be a part of things that we're, like, that we agree with, you know, as opposed to, like, I remember being younger, it was just, like, you get on any show you could get on, you know, Mm -hmm. and I feel like we're not really picky, but more picky about, you know, what shows to play and what shows not to play, being a little smarter about it. Yeah, I mean, when the band started, the only thing in mind was, like, put out as much cool stuff on vinyl as possible and just try to travel and tour as much as possible. In your opinion, would bands do it right? Um, like, to say bands that have done it right kind of a thing? Yeah, ban- bands that you, uh, you you just look at and you're like, wow, that band knows what's up. Um, it's hard to say, I mean, especially as not knowing bands personally, mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of hard to, to, to say a certain band because we don't really know the full background of things. But, I mean, there are, there are bands, I mean, Fugazi, I love the guzzy. But I mean, like, you know, they'll still only, the only time they ever played was if it was a $5 show. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that, which is awesome. I mean, obviously, we're not that strict about things or, or whatever, but that's a band I could look at and be like, that band held to what they truly believed in, you know? Mm-hmm. And I mean, I think on a personal level, all of us can say, like, touring with Converge and touring with Thursday and Coalesce and some of the older bands that, you know, have been around a long time, like, I respect everything they've done, and as people, like, I respect them as artists, like, especially knowing them now as people, so, like, I can say I look up to those guys as, you know, I would like to be their age and have, like, they think the same way we do about everything, you know, and uh, all those dudes are up on current music, they're not, you know, they're there, they're in their age, but they're still the same person, and that, I feel like all of us look up to any band like that. When you look at who you guys were when you were 16 years old and, and uh, you compare yourself to who you are now after knowing guys like Converge, how has your mindset changed? I just think my, my focus is definitely different. Whereas, you know, it was things like high school, high school problems and stuff, and now it's kind of like, you know, art, artwork. How's your mindset changed from when you were oh, 16? Man. So when yeah. I was 16, I attended a lot of ska shows. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, go to Aquabed. 
live shows every time they played in Los Angeles. And I was just a kid in a large crowd. And it's just become a very surreal experience to be... From skanking to stage diving? Yeah, from skanking to stage diving behind the scenes. You know. <laughs> hanging, out, hanging out with my pal, Jake Bannon, and skanking the off bath. It's just... It's been a very, sur- it's been a very surreal change. Things have, things have just gotten very crazy. It's great. I welcome it with open arms. So where do you guys want to go? Like, what are your... Uh, do you have objectives? Kind of just playing everything by ear and just excited about what comes our way. You know, we're about to go to Europe for the first time. We've never been, so we're very excited about that. I mean, some, some of the guys in the band have, have, have gone, like, trips there, but mm-hmm. never toured. So we've been looking forward to it for a real long time, and we're excited it's actually finally happening now. It's great. How many minutes are we at? 16 minutes. It's getting lengthy. <laughs> yeah, I think I like you're getting stories. Deep, you're getting deep. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> especially the ass story. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Yeah, it's great. Now it's on the public. We got as intimate as possible within Absolutely. the first four minutes. Yeah, that was the first question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, it's yeah. always Sang, in Washington, though. Sang me always. Over yeah. the asshole. Wait, how long have you been in the band? Uh, coming up on exactly a year. It so was, yeah, it was a year ago. This is the month. newest guy, right? Uh, yeah, him. Or I mean, both these guys have always toured with us. Okay. Uh, or not always, but yeah. but he's toured with us a bunch. Um, wait, or did we you guys? We've been on. The yeah, same you guys have been on the same tours, but I well, guess it's TK. So I didn't do this. I didn't do South by Southwest. But, but I mean, TK he, used to fill in on bass on tour, and I was the bass player before. Okay. And our uh, band's very confusing. Yeah, there's a lot of like weird changes, but he's in it. So. Yeah. <laughs> and probably has played more shows than I have. Yeah. We we lost a guitar player, and so he plays guitar now. So yeah, we also kind of like like it's weird. This kind of was the touring lineup for a while, like because our other guitar player wasn't. He was like touring half the time, kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were filling in for him, and we were filling in for Nick too. Um, and he had been doing the filling in. So then when he actually officially left the band uh, this year. Um, it was just kind of like, all right, well, I guess you play guitar now, and you play bass like you normally did anyways. So. Like we've done tours before where, I mean, we, we lost our original drummer pretty quick into the band, too. Uh, and like, we have done tours where it was like he and I were the only actual members, and there was like two or three other fill-ins. Whoa, and yeah. really? And Clayton's the only one that's actually ever played every two every show. show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, how did that work? <laughs> Jeremy um, was... I was you're, you're my voice was it. gone. And I was like super sick, and uh, every yeah so everyone good. everyone had drove down to San Diego the day before and stayed at my friend's house, and Jeremy did it because he had to go to work, and then he called me in the morning. And was like, I literally can't come. Like, I can't even speak. Yeah. So then we were gonna cancel it, and I I remember calling the other band, and they were like, Nah, dude, you should just play. So me and Clayton sang. Yeah, me and Nick <laughs> sang. Which I still to this day want to see that video more than you know. Yeah, there were a lot of anything. syllables instead of words. Sung. Anything. <laughs> Let's just say. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have day jobs too? Um. How How do you juggle that? Yeah. I mean, uh, I. He's I used, sure. Yeah. That's it. I, I, I used to work at a good nine to five, but I got fired for touring too much. Um, <laughs> happens. Uh, but I do like work when I'm. I, I, everyone tries to scrounge up work when they're home. Like Elliot was doing landscaping work for a while. I, game testing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, game groups, testing. Game testing. Whatever, uh, just to make focus money. Focus groups. Yeah, like like whatever. Game. Yeah, whatever you can make money. <laughs> Power seller. Between and then I, I was. I've been doing uh, like building sets for like commercials and music videos. Oh yeah. Like, do you guys still live at home then? Yeah. You guys are so lucky. Like, 